Some books you remember from the first time you've read one, like this book that I'm going to share tonight is the first science fiction fantasy book I ever read. It shouldn't surprise you that it is about a dragon. Interestingly enough, it is also one of my husband's favorite that he read mm, far before I ever read it. But well, I wanted to share it with you tonight and take you into the wonderful world that Anne McCaffrey brought us through the Dragon Riders of Pern. Hi, everybody. It's Gretchen Shepherd tonight with Book Bites with the Book Lady. And tonight I have a special book for you. Again, it's recommended by the dragons, but it is also one of the very first dragon books that I remember reading. And I read it as a teen, I believe. And my husband talks about having read it in his early high school or when it first came out. He would have been probably in junior high when it came out. But it is a book that has lasted and a series that has stayed and prevailed. Um, one of the early science fiction fantasy series that was written in a way that captured uh, so many young people in that, that area. It's written by an amazing author by the name of Anne McCaffrey. And Anne she was born in 1926. She passed away in November of 2011. But she was an Irish white writer known for the Dragon Riders of Pern science fiction series. She was the first woman to win a Hugo Award for fiction and the first to win a Nebula Award. Her 1978 novel, The White Dragon, became one of the first science fiction books to appear on the New York Times bestseller list. So this book is um, the first book in her Dragon Riders of Pern series. And the, the book I'm going to read from tonight is called Dragonflight. I'm just going to give you a little touch of it. Her ability to uh, put words together and create a story and create a world that was just right to capture that balance between a science fiction, which if you were a science fiction fan, you might have read I, Robot at the time by Isaac Asimov. But for me, that was a little bit too science fiction. The science fiction fantasy really appealed to me. And so I thought I would share a book bite from Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey the first book in the Dragon Riders of Pern. Part one, Where Search. Drummer beat and piper blow, harper strike and soldier go, free the flame and sear the grasses till the dawning red star passes. Lessa woke, cold cold with more than chill of the everlastingly clammy stone walls, cold with the prescience of a danger stronger than the one ten full turns ago that had then sent her whimpering with terror to hide in the watchware's odorous lair. Rigid with concentration, Lessa lay in the straw with the redolent cheese room she shared as sleeping quarters with the other kitchen dredges. There was an urgency in the ominous portent, unlike any other forewarning. She touched the awareness of the watchware, slithering on its rounds in the courtyard. It circled in the choke limit of its chain. It was restless, but oblivious to anything unusual in the pre-dawn darkness. Lessa curled into a tight knot of bones, hugging herself to ease the strain across her tense shoulders, then forcing herself to relax, muscle by muscle, joint by joint. She tried to feel what subtle menace it might be that could rouse her 
yet not distress the sensitive watchware. The danger was definitely not within the walls of Rotha Hold, nor approaching the paved perimeter without the hold where restless grass had forced new growth through the ancient mortar, green witness to the deterioration of the once stone clean hold. The danger was not advancing up the now little used causeway from the valley, nor lurking in the craftsman's stony holdings at the foot of the hold's cliff. It did not scent the wind that blew from Tillich's cold shores, but still it twanged sharply through her senses, vibrating every nerve in Lessa's slender frame. Fully roused, she sought to identify it before the prescient move dissolved. She cast outward toward the pass, farther than she had ever pressed. Whatever threatened was not in Ruatha, yet. Nor did it have a familiar flavor. It was not then facts. Lessa had been cautiously pleased that Fax had not shown himself at Ruatha Hold in three full turns. The ap- apathy of the craftsmen, the decaying farm holds, even the green etched stones of the hold infuriated Fax, self-styled lord of the high reaches, to the point where he preferred to forget the reason he had subjugated the once proud and profitable hold. Relentlessly, compelled to identify this oppressing menace, Lessa groped in the straw for her sandals. She rose, mechanically brushing straw from her matted hair, which she then twisted quickly into a rude knot at her neck. She picked her way among the sleeping dredges, huddled together for warmth, and glided up the worn steps to the kitchen proper. The cook and his assistant lay on the long table before the great hearth, wide backs to the warmth of the banked fire, discordantly snoring. Lessa slipped across the cavernous kitchen to the stable yard door. She opened the door just enough to permit her slight body to pass. The cobbles of the yard were icy through the thin soles of her sandals, and she shivered as the pre-dawn air penetrated her patched garment. The watch wear slithered across the yard to greet her, pleading as it always did for release. Comfortingly, she fondled the creases of the sharp-tipped ears as it matched her stride. Glancing fondly down at the awesome head, she promised it a good rub presently. It crouched, groaning at the end of its chain as she continued to the groove steps that led to the rampart over the hold's massive gate. Atop the tower, Lessa stared toward the east, where the stony breasts of the pass rose in black relief against the gathering day. Indecisively, she swung to her left, for the sense of danger issued from that direction as well. She glanced upward, her eyes drawn to the red star that had recently begun to dominate the dawn sky. As she stared, the star radiated a final ruby pulsation before its magnificence was lost in the brightness of Pern's rising sun. Incoherent fragments of tales and ballads about the dawn appearance of the red star flashed through her mind, too quickly to make sense. Moreover, her instinct told her that Though danger might come from the northeast, too, there was a greater peril to contend with from due east. Straining her eyes as if vision could bridge the gap between peril and person, she stared intently eastward. The watchwear's thin, whistled question reached her just as the prescience waned. I think I'll stop there. I love the way that Anne McCaffrey creates a story. Her crafting of of the sentences and of the way she puts the words together and the rhythm of the language that she uses is absolutely spellbinding. 
in so many ways when you read it. And it, it's fun to read it aloud. This is a book that you might enjoy just pulling out of the library and sitting down and reading it out loud to yourself. Believe it or not, that's a fun thing to do. And you can get a lot from a book. And you know, you just might find somebody else who likes to sit and listen to it with you. That's my book bite for today. Book Bites with the Book Lady, Dragonflight, the first book in the Dragon Riders of Pern series by Anne McCaffrey. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, keep looking for the beauty hidden in plain sight. It's all around you. But the per first place you'll find it is when you go look in the mirror. And I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.